so I can continue with my presentation. The second presentation will be from us as a team, actually about the project. So what was the Educhain project about, why it started, what was its philosophy and how it actually developed. This is mainly for those who are not familiar with EduChange project to introduce you why we are here. Uh, so what is actually EduChange? As I said before, it was a three years EU funded project where every year we had about two field courses all together at 12 days, plus minus 24 students a year. There were years when we had more students, there were years when we had less students, but more or less it was about 24 students a year from four different universities. Uh, why we actually call it EduChange? The idea is that we want to change the way we teach about climate change or how the climate change is taught at high schools. We believe that through the international cooperation and transdisciplinary approaches, we can learn from each other and we can also bring uh, new methods and new technologies in. It was all student-centered, so we believe that we can bring new approaches by more involving students into uh, teaching approaches. So students actually became teachers at high schools and it all went through blended learning, what especially this year was quite crucial as we were not able to have a part of our meeting in Norway and we had it online only. So who is actually EduChange? As I said, these are four universities, but for me, it's not just four titles. For me, it's a group of students and teachers and experts we've been meeting for three years. And unfortunately, I can't tell you ev exactly every single name, but from uh, publicly available pictures, I can show you just some of the faces who were part of our journey. Theoretically, this was our time frame for the three years. So we every year we had a, a course in a March or February, March in the three different locations. First year was in Olomouc, second year in Malta and third year in Utrecht. Then we had a gap for students to actually organize their own activities back home at their schools. And then in May, we've been meeting in Trondheim, except this year, when due to obvious reasons, we had to move it into virtual and online environment. So just for you to show you how our whole cycle was structured and why, we had seven days intensive field course where it was very intensive and we focus on practical issues of climate change, mainly related to water. Then there was, a, as I said, two to three months time for preparing education activities. Students did that in their national groups and then they were able to test it in the local high schools. And after that, we've met again for a five day science gym, which was mainly about sharing experience, what worked, what did not work, which activities had a fantastic success and which activities we just do not need to repeat again. Uh, just a few examples, you can see that our field courses were a combination of lectures and outdoor activities. These are from our first year Olomode cycle, the second year in Malta, you can see it was again in March, but the weather was very different. And the last year was in the Netherlands, where we experienced very typical Dutch weather, water from a top, water from a bottom, water from a side but that's a part of the field course. You experience what the climate change actually is in the field. Sometimes it was a bit too challenging for some of us, but uh, we had this experience of crossing the rivers in the Dutch lowlands. Then there was a time of a student period when they, together with our, us, developed the activities some of the activities were indoor, some of them were outdoor, some of them were with the computers, some of them were very practical with the board games. This variety cannot be described within the one or two slides, but later on I will show you where you can find all the activities online so you can browse them on their own. And the last part, as I said, was the science jam where every year we've met in Trondheim. Again, part of it online, 
evaluate on site, in the field, trying new methods, new activities, virtual reality, but also bird watching and hiking in the Norwegian woods. We also had the possibility to experience some of the weird uh, Norwegian uh, traditions. This is the Norwegian National Day where different groups of people walk through the mark and this is the group of stormtroopers with the uh, Norwegian flags. As I said before, this year was a bit different. We had to turn all our activities into virtual reality with 3D glasses and uh, Zoom and uh, virtual Google expeditions. We switched what we were supposed to do in Norway into online. This brought us various challenges, but based on the evaluation, our students actually appreciated that we were able to organize such event. Um, I was thinking to give you a brief presentation about EduChange philosophy, if we have something like EduChange philosophy. As we have a philosopher in the team, I have the philosophy just in an apostrophe. It's not a true philosophy. It's what we somehow believe what EduChange can be. Uh, for us, it, EduChange as such, it's the two words, education and change. It's describing the change in teaching and also in a learning process. It also describes the change in uh, teaching in the field, getting from the classrooms back into field work using games and uh, GIS and computers and virtual reality and uh, cell phones. But we also change in a way how we see ourselves as a teacher and a student. The boundary between being a teacher and being a student is fluid. So sometimes you're a student and sometimes you're a teacher. Our students were teachers back when they came to uh, high schools. So this uh, boundary was not really strict for us. And we believe that in this cascade of being a teacher in one time and being a student in another time, changing the whole paradigm, how we teach about climate change will have the, let's say, uh, cascade effect and will reflect on the high school students back and on the be their behaviors. This is also what we've heard in the presentations before and we will also hear in the presentation after mine how the public behavior or perception of climate change can be affected by projects like this one. Uh, just a little example of one year cycle. This is the program of uh, Utrecht uh, field course just for you to know that the field courses are very intensive from early morning till the evening, full of presentations, lectures, but also workshops and uh, uh, field courses. This was the original plan of going to Norway. We were supposed to be most of the time outdoors, trying different workshops and activities, but as I said, it was changed due to the coronavirus. So if you have a look on a project, we of course do a lot of evaluation. We did evaluation on uh, three stages. After field course, after the science gym, what is the Trondheim activity and after the whole cycle, usually about two months after the whole cycle. And I picked just two posts or two examples from the evaluation that uh, our participants believe that they are more aware of things that they can do about climate change and they are also a few more skilled than using geospatial technologies about the climate change, thanks to the project. Uh, the whole full report takes about 30 pages, so it, obviously we don't have a time to go through it here, but these are some of the points that I wanted to point out that were the outcomes of our project, and we are proud of that. Uh, every project needs to have its visibility, uh, we were visible on the different platforms, on uh, academic papers, on a uh, local newspaper, both in English, Norwegian, Czech. Uh, we did our best to present it. If you have a look on the hardcore outcomes, and especially for the activities, for the first two years, they are compediums of the activities that students created. These compediums are freely downloadable from the project webpage. So if you're interested in seeing what activities actually students did, you can go on the webpage and download the whole set of the activities. 
this year Compidium will be available within a couple of months. Uh, I just have a, one example of a practical outcome. Uh, it's a board game that was created throughout the project and that we also later on played with our students. This is a board game where you as a participant or a player have to design a city and then the flood will come and based on the sever severance of the floods, you will see which buildings actually survive. You have a different anti-flood measures that you can build like trees and uh, blocks. And the idea is to design a city that is actually workable and it will survive the floods. Uh, this basically was my introduction of the project for those who are not familiar with that. And if you have any questions, how the project worked, and etc. I'm back to the chat. So if you have any questions, either here or online, let me know. Any questions from here? I see one hand. Uh, can I? Okay, waiting for one question. No questions online yet. Hello. <laughs> um, I was wondering because I'm one of the participants. And uh, we raised concerns that we wanted the program to be more eco-friendly. And we were talking about um, <laughs> how we were flying a lot. So if you would, in future, if there was another program or another run of this one, if you would consider making it um, virtual and like it was during the lockdown. Thank you. Yes, we had this discussion many times. You're flying too much and you're doing events about climate change. Uh, that's true. Uh, the lockdown showed us that it's possible to do it virtual. Nevertheless, I would not repeat it if possible because the field course is actually about being in the field and it's very hard to do it virtually, not being in the field, having the first hand experience. On the other hand, we are planning the, the future EduChange 2.0 where we reduce the number of uh, courses from two to one. So there will be one less event, one less flying. But there were also other ways how to reduce uh, carbon footprint. Uh, last year, students traveled to Norway by trains, buses, etc. This year, we took a train to Netherlands from Olomouc. So there are ways how to reduce our carbon footprint. Obviously, if you're from Malta and you need to get to Norway, there's no other way than flying. Uh, you can get a boat, yes, but it will take you about three months. So, yeah, we are aware of that. We are trying to do as much online as possible, but there are certain parts of the program that we just can't turn into online meeting. Any more questions or suggestions? Uh, no more questions online yet. Uh, if not, I'm okay with that. Uh, for online participants, uh, please don't forget to register or actually confirm your participation. So far we have five people confirmed participation, but I see at least 20 people online. Uh, so if you're online, just click on the link. It's on the top of the chat, uh, EDC hyphen register. That's really helpful. Uh, if there are no more questions, we will have a next presenter who's Tim in 15 minutes, so quarter past 10.